congratulations, new captain of Celtic. What does it mean to you? Yeah, thanks very much. Um, you know, it's it's obviously a massive honour to to be named club captain. Um, to to come through the the youth academy to where I am now. Um, it's a very proud day for myself, my family, everyone connected with myself. Um, so first of all, I just want to say thanks to the manager as well for that. Um, it's a huge honour, and you know I can't wait to get to work and you know and, and build something here. What are you looking to take from Scott Brown's captaincy at Celtic? Yeah, of course, Scott was hugely successful um, as club captain here. I've had the honour to, to work closely beside him, um, see how he operates every day, the way that he drives the changing room, the way that he drives the club. So, you know, for me, it's, I've, I've had no better education in that sense. So, you know, I just want to try and follow that as closely as I can. And then, obviously, you know, you have to put your own personality on it, your own stamp on it. And, and you know, ultimately, it's a new era for the club. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm just desperate to get to work and, and make it a successful one. You're saying it's a new era for Celtic, obviously. How are Celtic fixed going into that first game tomorrow night? Yeah, good. Everyone's in, in good spirits. Um, the boys trained well today. Real intensity about the session. Um, and we know we know how important these games are. They, uh, they set you up for the season. So, you know, everybody's in a good frame of mind, um, confident, ready to go. Cheers. Raman. Thanks, Ian. Hi guys, uh, Andrew. Just wondered how you feel, how how ready your squad is for for this tie. Yeah, we, um, you know, as Carl said, we we've had a good session today. Um, you know, we got uh, a few more bodies out there in terms of players who are kind of had some niggly injuries that didn't play on the weekend. And um, yeah, the the squad was nice and and bright and energetic and. Uh, yeah, as Cal's already said, it's an important fixture for the football club, uh, important fixture for our year ahead, so I'm um, looking forward to it. Had a look at your squad list for this tie. I think you can still make another two wild cards, is it? Do you intend to do that? In the next 24 hours? Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, I'd love to, but, mate, that's not a wild card. That's a that's a miracle card, so none of those, none of those exist at the moment. Sure, I'm even thinking from your existing squad you could have put, but no. No, no. Look, uh, you know, we we obviously, you know, it's it's quite evident that um, you know we need to bring more players in. But as I explained on Saturday, it's a challenging time. It's not just about signing players; it's about when they're actually available for you to play with with all the restrictions that in place at the moment. And uh, you know, the squad we announced, um, uh, the squad list we've announced, is the one that will go into this game and this fixture. And are you confident that in the weeks to come you're going to be able to build the squad that you want, Ange? Am I confident? Well, look, I'm, I'm, I'm confident we're going to um, do everything in our power to do that. And um, I'm pushing every day and, and people are working hard behind the scenes to try and um, make that happen. And, um, you yeah, know, my role in that is to, to try and uh, pursue every avenue I can within the club and outside the club to get things done. And um, that's what I'll be endeavouring to do um, for the next few weeks. Uh, as I said, it's it's... Yeah, it's fairly obvious we need some more players, just on numbers alone, uh, when you look at sort of the, the people who have left from last year and, and, and the ones we've brought in. So, um, you know, we've still got work to do. And, yeah, that's sort of running alongside the fact that I, I still have a team to prepare for tomorrow. You know, I'm not I'm not sort of losing sight of that. Um, that as I said, it's a very important game. And uh, for me, the focus is is squarely on the players here at the moment who, who, who will go out there tomorrow night and hopefully put in a good performance. And if I may, Ange, the players that haven't made your squad uh, for this, Olivia and Cham, Christopher Iyer, want to give us your thoughts on that? Well, again, I'm, you know, I'm selecting players who I think are, are available and, and uh, both have the the physical and, and mental mindset to play, and um, you know the ones who aren't listed on that, uh, obviously, um, are not ready for what uh, what we need to encounter tomorrow night. So, again, my focus is on the guys who who are on that list. Uh, there there are so many sort of moving parts at the moment that you know I've, I'm trying to be as disciplined as I can to to focus what's in my control because ultimately tomorrow night is the most important thing. And uh, if tomorrow night's the most important thing, I'm focusing on the people who are going to um, contribute to that. And a word on handing Callum the captaincy. 
this easy decision for you? Yeah, look, uh, you know, it's. Uh, I don't think it'll be a surprise to anyone. I mean, enough people told me coming in that he was, you know, the outstanding candidate. But as always, um, you know, from my perspective, it was getting to know him and, and just seeing him around the place. And, um, you know, obviously knew of his qualities as a footballer. And um, I think they were further enhanced, uh, you know, over the summer period with his performances for the national team. Um, but, you know, since he's come back from training, um, yeah, there's no doubt he's he's a leader. Um, I think irrespective of the captaincy, he, he looks like a, a person to me who, who would be a leader in the dressing room anyway. So, um, you know, I, I, I think it's important for this football club that, you know, there are certain traditions and values that are, need to upheld, be upheld uh, irrespective of the people who are custodians uh, at, the, at any given time. And having someone like Cal who's grown up at this football club, he knows those clearly. So, um, yeah, easy decision, but also the best decision. Thank you. Hi, Ange. Uh, what have you been told about the, the importance of European football to Celtic? Well, whatever I've been told is just reinforcing what I already know. Um, I totally understand the, the significance of European football to this football club. Um, and to be honest, it was one of the attractions for me as well, because I know that this, you know, the club has a great history in 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 Europe, and and the you know the opportunity to, to build on that is is a fantastic enticement, I guess, for any manager. So, yeah, I, I think you know there's no doubt since since I've come here that's been reinforced about how important it is. But nothing that I didn't already know or didn't already feel before I came to the club. What are you expecting from FC Michelin tomorrow night? Yeah, it'll be it'll be a tough contest. They're a club that. Um, you know, sort of matured over recent years. They've got a real clear identity and model in terms of the, the way they, you know, um, want to play and also the way they want to be set up in developing footballers. Um, and, you know, it's a model that's worked really well for them. You know, they had a fantastic campaign last year in Europe. Um, it's a club I know well. There's been a few Aussies that have gone through there, so I've followed their progress. And, um, yeah, there'll be a tough challenge, which you expect. I mean, it's 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 a big prize that's before us. So I guess any any opponent you're going to face understands that that the rewards are great, and uh, yeah, for us that'll be a good challenge tomorrow. And I don't know if you had the chance to watch the the European draw come in. Um, it was all quite complicated. But if you do manage to negotiate yourself past Michelin, uh, it will be Galatasaray or PSV Eindhoven. How tough will that be? Uh, I'll let you know after we get through this one first because um, I think this one's going to be tough enough for us and that's where our focus is. I mean, to be honest, I didn't even know the draw was on. It was, we had training and somebody mentioned to me afterwards. So I am, uh, you know, what's the saying? I'm literally living one day at a time at the moment because every day is pretty pretty precious because there's so much to do. And, um, you know, we'll look ahead, uh, you know, again, irrespective. You get through each round, I, I, I suspect every opponent you're going to face is going to be uh, just as challenging. So first uh, thing for us is, you know, really important putting a good performance tomorrow night. We're going to have 9,000 people at Celtic Park and um, they're going to be excited as anyone. And I, I guarantee you they'll make the, the noise of 90,000. So, you know, we just got to put in a really good performance for them tomorrow. Thank you. Hi guys, um, first of all Callum, congratulations, obviously back in front of fans at Celtic Park tomorrow, how exciting a prospect is that? Yeah, really exciting, um, like you said, first competitive game to get them back into the stadium, they'll be desperate to get back in and, and back the team and, and make some noise and you know just for the players as well to, to have them back is, is amazing, um, you know these European nights can be really special and like the manager says there'll be 9,000 but you know, it'll feel like it's full um, and it's our job to, to go out and perform and, and make them make the noise as well. And, and like I've, I've touched on before, you know, we both drive each other. We drive the fans, the fans drive us. And, and when that comes together, we can have a special night. So, like I said, that's our full focus as players is, is to go out and, and do the business tomorrow night. When you think about Scotland's two games at Hamden at Euro 2020, it felt like a lot more than, you know, 12,500 that was in the ground. Is that what you're hoping for the 9,000 tomorrow night will be like? Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, when you when you go for no fans in to, to 12,000, it, it felt like it was full. And and like I said, it'll be very similar tomorrow night. Um, so it's, it's just great to, to get everyone back in and, 
you know, get a feel for, for normality again and, and hopefully we can keep uh, making little steps in the right direction. Hi, Ange. Um, has it always been a personal ambition of yours to manage in the Champions League? Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I don't know whether it was a personal ambition, but it's it's something that, as I said, I, I, I've had a pretty fortunate football career where it's just presented opportunities for me, whether that was you know, coaching in a World Cup or coaching in foreign leagues or whatever, and it's not something I've strived for, but I think that's the beauty of the game, that, you know, if, you, if you're fortunate enough to have success, opportunities open up, and... You know, the, the fact that, you know, I'll be involved in Champions League football for the first time is, is certainly, um, you know, it will be a special moment for me, absolutely. Um, is it something I've aimed for? I, I, my goals in life have always been the same, you know, just to enjoy what I do and be as successful as I can and, and see what comes next. Um, but, you know, as I said, for me, it'll be... Um, It'll be a special night, and and you know the fact that it's at this football club's ma- this football club makes it even more special because I know, you know the European nights here. Um, you know everyone I spoke to who's experienced it. That's that's the first thing they mentioned. So I'm really looking forward to it. I know negotiating the transfer market can never be easy, especially in the current circumstances. But when you first arrived at the club, had you maybe hoped that by this date you'd maybe have a few more bodies in the door? Yeah, I guess, you know, in an ideal world, for sure, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd have a full complement of players and we would have been together for, you know, a good two, three weeks. And uh, but, but at the same time, I knew going into it that that was unlikely to be the case. It's just, I mean, I even on the other side of the world, you know, transfer dealings, we, you know, we, we signed foreigners in, in, in Japan and we had to wait three months for them to get into the country. So I kind of knew it would be a challenging uh, prospect, um, you know, I definitely think um, that you know we we probably hesitated a couple of times and, and could have moved faster on some things and and that hasn't helped us um, because under normal circumstances those kind of processes um, are fairly straightforward in terms of get a player sign him get him on a plane take a photo and, and away he goes and yeah you know, that process is now taking two to three weeks so that's where I think um, you know we we just got to move a little bit more uh, you know, precisely and understand that there's always going to be a lag time, so we just got to move a bit quicker. Is that the hope then, that over the next few weeks, you know, the club will be a bit more efficient when it comes to the transfer market? Yeah, I, I don't want to say it's a club that's not been efficient. It's just, you know, just the normal dealings of day-to-day. Day. It's not just from our side, it's the people you're dealing with as well that, you know, we'll get back to you tomorrow, and normally that's okay, but getting back to you tomorrow could mean a week delay in a process, you know? So it's not just about us, it's about actually doing deals. And, and you know, both sides may have goodwill, but like I said, normal occurrences, which you say, well, it's not a big deal in the current climate makes, makes it more challenging. And just finally for me, and a couple of the players that, that haven't featured in pre-season games for different reasons that are in the Champions League squad, Lee Griffiths and Ryan Christie, are they in training? Are they available for tomorrow night? Yeah, as I said, we, we've had a few who've sort of had some nigglies and um, injuries and sort of we've been protecting a little bit. Um, that Yeah, they're all available. So the guys on the list are all available for, for tomorrow night, which which is good. Like I said, we had a good session today and it was just good to see some of those guys back out there. Uh, Sorrow was out there. Uh, Biton was out there. You know, guys who, you know, are, are, are pretty important members of this squad. Um, you know, felt like it was a good training session because we had, you know, for the first time probably since I've been here, the, the, the majority of the squad out there. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hi, hiya, hi Ange. Um, can I just ask, how difficult is it to prepare for a game of this magnitude so early in the season? Is, it, is that something that you've had to deal with before in your previous jobs? Um, yeah, I mean, every job's challenging, and every you know, as much as we all like to think that we're the most important people in the world, everywhere I've been, everyone wants to win that every game that you want to play so that doesn't change um yeah i understand the significance of this and it comes early but it's something that you know is is part of you know european fixturing these days that you know if you don't if you don't win your league then you're going to be involved fairly early and um you know i was well aware i mean i that again from the moment i sort of got the job the, the countdown clock's been on for people telling me how far away the most important game is so I've been I've been well aware of it so it's not something that's caught me on the hop um yeah for me as I said it's it's just trying to be disciplined in in making sure that 
I prepare the team the best I can for this game and such an important game, but also understand that there's other stuff that needs to be done, which is also very important for us to set up our season. So, um, so yeah, so from that perspective, um, yeah, would it be better if it was in two weeks' time? For sure, but those things are kind of out of my control. You've obviously you've managed at the highest level internationally in terms of the World Cup with Australia, but how much are you personally relishing this challenge of managing in the Champions League? Is it something new for you? It's obviously a massive club competition. Yeah, as I said before, that's that's why you do these things and that's the beauty of the game. It just provides you unique challenges and I love I love that about the game, you know, that you, you kind of go along and, and, as I said, I haven't any really set goals in my career, but things have just transpired and you find yourself, you know, 24 hours out from cha- you know, managing in a Champions League fixture, which is which is beautiful. I mean, that's, like I said, that's that for me is uh, why I love this game and why I love what I do. And, yeah, I'm, as I said, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the challenge, which will be a great one, but I'm also looking forward to, to the experience. You touched on how difficult the, the transfer window has been for you as well. Um, have you got an idea of how many players that you, that you kind of want to add to the squad and what specific areas that you're, you're targeting to, to strengthen? I mean, that's, I mean, it's a constantly evolving picture. Where, um, you know, there's, there's, you know, the, the, the status of the squad, you know, is, is constantly sort of changing. So what I do know is we still need to bring in um, you know, a certain number of players. And, and like I said, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that when you look at the amount of players who left at the end of last year, whether that was players on loan or players who've, who've departed, as opposed to the ones we brought in, you kind of know there's already a, a gap there. Now, it doesn't have to be precisely the same number, but we're definitely... When I look at the squad now, we're still very light on in areas, uh, just for depth more than anything else. Uh, because it, if we want to challenge on all fronts, we're going to need a strong squad. And um, at the moment, we don't have that. So, um, you know, the number is not precise. As a manager, I'm always going to want more than I'm given. So I'll, I, if I say 10, then um, they'll only get me 10. So I don't say a number and just try and get as many as I can. Can I finally just ask, um, how you're settling into life in Scotland. I, I don't know if you would have had much time. You're probably a, a busy guy right now, but how are, you, how are you enjoying life in Scotland so far? Yeah, look, as you said, it's 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 been fairly busy, you know, with with uh, camp as well in Wales. Um, you know, apart from avoiding heat stroke, everything's been pretty good, mate. Um, you know, everyone was just complaining about the weather, but it's it's just been... Uh, glorious here. I, I haven't had a chance to be out and about. I'll be, I'll be honest. I, um, my family's not here yet. Um, again, that's part of the experience that we're looking forward to. Um, but you know, right now my focus, rightly so, is is here. You know, it's Lennox Town, it's it's Celtic Park, and and you know, making sure that this football club is is ready to to do its utmost for for its supporters tomorrow night. Thank you. Do we have someone from the Danish media? Anyone wishing to ask a question? No. Anyone else has got the chance? No. Can I just, hello Ange, can I just yeah. ask you about uh, Lee Griffiths? Is, is a line being drawn under that or what is the situation with him? Is he ready to go tomorrow night? Yeah, he's, he's ready to go. I, I think I said before, you know, the, the whole process with, with, with Lee was pretty simple for me. Um, uh, obviously, with regards to the incident, other people took control of that investigation. I think, from what I understand, everything's been sorted in terms of understanding what took place. Uh, and from then, he was made available, and that's when he came back into my consciousness as a footballer. You know, I, I and I'm not I'm not the kind who absolves themselves of responsibility of things, but with a limited 24 hours every day and the amount of things that I need to concentrate on, I, I've decided that I'll concentrate on things that I control and, and I can control and and once Lee you know came back into into the squad and, and everything was um, sort of settled from in terms of the incident then he's back being a Celtic player he's back being part of the squad and he's available for selection tomorrow in terms of his fitness how, how sharp is he looking look he's like a few of them you know they're still sort of building into it you know no one's had an ideal sort of preparation it's just the challenges of of where we're at because you know we've had guys coming in at different times uh, whether that's you know because they had different end dates others had to do um quarantine others like 
Cal have been on international duty. So they're all at sort of different levels. Um, what I do know is that we've worked them really hard the last sort of week, just trying to get them all up to a certain um, level. I don't think any of them are, are kind of at the fitness we need them to be for, for what's ahead. But, um, you know, I'm confident that, that all of them are in, a, in, a, in good enough condition to, to sort of put in a good performance tomorrow night. OK. And just James Forrest at the fitness level you need him to be at, given his isolation period. James Forrest's fitness levels? Yeah, same, mate. It, exactly the same. It's like they're all at different levels. They're not um, They're not all of them where they need to be, but um, as I said, they're all presenting themselves. They're all working hard, and um, whoever's on the squad tomorrow is available for selection.